Welcome to Cracking the Horsebeak Code. We welcome you to take the journey with us as we explore the horse's language, mind, and heart. Welcome to Cracking the Horse Beat Code. I'm Laura Wilsey here with Sharon Wilsey. We're so pleased to have you all with us today. And we look forward to talking about the gestures, postures, and signals that horses are using with each other to communicate their needs, their wants, and desires within the herd. So Sharon, tell us a little bit about how you came up with Horse Speak. Oh my, that's a lot. <laughs> well, just a little bit. I know it is a lot. Just a well, it's bit. fun that we we do have the the gestures, postures, and signals as one thing. That's the GPS. Um, but basically, it was uh, ten years or at least studying how horses communicated with each other, because I was exposed to hundreds of horses because I worked at a rescue, and I also worked for uh, a college and taught lessons for many, many years. So being around that many horses all the time and wanting to dive deeper, wanting to help my students, my human students, to understand horses better, but also at rescues where you have a lot of injured horses or horses that are suffering, figuring out a way in. To, some of them don't trust people anymore. And, and you know, if, if I could find a better way in to even begin uh, working with them, they could get rehabilitated quicker and move on to a better home. So really, those two avenues were the impetus for me to want to know more about how horses are communicating with each other. And there was a lot of um, development in the last 20, 30 years towards people being interested in having a relationship with horses. You Which know. is so much different than what we've been used to in the past where we did need them to work with us, mending the fields, going to market, that kind of thing. They were more uh, working with us rather than us like, hey, horse, let's just go out and have a good time together. Right. And at this point, we don't, like, as Laura said, we don't need horses to get the eggs to market, you know, but we, we like horses. Human beings and horses have been together for thousands of years, so... We have developed um, a desire. There's, you know, they're in art and, and this poetry and oh, yeah. there's mythologies about flying horses and unicorns. And I mean, we're, we're really kind of um, infiltrated with horses. I mean, horsepower, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, chomping at the bit to go somewhere and do mm -hmm. something. We have a lot of sayings that come from our, our lifetimes of spending time with them. So I think bottom line is people want to know how to get along with a horse similar to how we get along with other pets like cats and dogs or even birds. And it's a lot different with horses because most of us don't live right. in the enclosure with a horse like we do with our cats and dogs. So right. then it's a completely different dynamic because you're going out to them in their environment right. versus us sharing space constantly within our own home. Yeah, like if your cat knocks enough things off the shelf, you're like, okay, the cat's hungry. <laughs> right. right. Or if the dog goes to the back door and scratches, you say, oh, he wants to go out. And animals figure out how to communicate signals to us so they can get their needs met. In the case of horses, because they're prey animals, whereas cats and dogs are predators. So the challenge that we have is, for one thing, horses don't do something that a cat or a dog or a human would do, which is to yelp. Meaning they don't go, I pipe, pipe, or ah, or Bleh! like they don't make a squealy noise mm -hmm. if something hurts. So number one difference between us, if they're in pain, they'll hide it because... Yeah, they have to. Yeah for survival i mean it's just when they're out in the wild it's like unfortunately the weakest link is the one that gets make, selected that gets selected by Predators. you know lions tigers and bears right. so it's um it's amazing how they can hide their discomfort right and for us it's actually a shame that they do that because then we can't actually help them but right. they're just it's survival of the fittest that's where they're coming from totally so one of the biggest misnomers is that um, either, you know, horses are kind of tough and really don't feel pain or that they're acting out, they're just being naughty and they're having bad behaviors because yeah. they're, they don't want to do the thing we want them to do. But what we've discovered, especially when I was working at the rescue, and that's actually where we met because you were working there too. Yes. Um, 
what we discovered is that more often than not, horses have hidden discomfort. It may not be out and out lameness or, or dramatic pain, but they could be uncomfortable. They could have a bad tooth. And then if anybody's ever had a toothache, yeah. you know, it just makes you really grumpy. So um, they're not going to, to go, I, 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 or they're, you know, by the time you know a horse is sick or not well, it's usually way past the point. You know, you should, they should have been telling you a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very clear. They down on the ground and all of a sudden right. you're like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You have Something's a perforated wrong. gut. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wish you told me before a month ago down. when we could have done this. Yeah. And so, and the thing is with horses that we've found is that if a horse is acting bad, typically it's because they're feeling bad. Right. And that has been a huge paradigm shift for so many people who have started learning horse speak is that it's just like, it's not them like biting at you because they want to drive you away. They may be nipping at you because their mouth hurts. That's right. one of the biggest things that we've been really finding is that their teeth can be out of balance, which then unfortunately for them, it puts out their whole entire skeleton. Yeah, which is a whole fascinating thing. It's but so I want to comment on something that you said, which is if a horse is nipping, the, the other primary reason that horses nip is they don't understand mm -hmm. enough about how to create personal space with a human being. Either they're immature, like they didn't get good socialization. Mm -hmm. I like to call it like some kids are, some horses are like in the foster care system. Absolutely. You know, they're taken away too young from their mothers and then they're put in with a bunch of other colts and then you know, or maybe they're isolated. And there can be a, a number of things that happen which sort of inhibit a horse's proper developmental stages. So they may just be forever a toddler in their mind. Or another thing that can happen is um, people have handled them really roughly. So in, in either case, you get horses that are like, I don't know enough about my personal space mm -hmm. and I don't understand how to get it if I need it so I'm just going to send you out which is what they do to another horse they would just nip at another horse mm -hmm. and say get out of here give me some room one other horse would say okay and deal with it but if it's you you can lose some skin yeah so one of the things that we do right off the bat is teach people how to create a healthy boundary so that you can have that nice bonding because we we have horses because we like them Right. We want bonding. Yeah. And so you can't really have good bonding with such a big animal if you don't have a healthy boundary for both of you. I need to be able to say that's enough. And the horse also needs to be able to say, hey, I need a minute without needing to bite me to send me away. So I don't want to have to slap them or drive them in a way that um, makes me feel bad. Right. And in a way that's just too much energy for them. And I don't want them to feel like they have to kick me or bite me to get me to give them some room either. Which brings us to the video we have today. Right. And just one of the things about horse speak is it's basically like if we were talking to a hearing impaired person and they use their hands. Sign language. As sign language. Similarly, that's what we're doing with the horses. Mm -hmm. So here I'm saying, hey, this is my bubble of personal space right here. And as soon as I put my hands away, then th that does actually welcome a horse back into your space. Now, and if they're if they're an emotionally mature horse, they might know. They would oh, be like, "Oh, cool, that's no my worries. human. They don't yeah. understand. They don't know, and I'll, I'll just respect their space." But if it's an immature horse or a troubled horse, or just or a, a really young horse that we're yeah, going to see today, or just actually. a confused horse like yeah. this young one that we are going to see, yeah, um, they just go, "Oh." invitation to come back yes and, and so then it's in. yeah and it's just one of these little things that to be aware of when you are around horses is that depending on their age their exposure if they were an orphan horse i mean we see that actually a lot not orphan but just the mentality of like how they get weaned really early and sometimes these horses end up going out into a herd of other babies and there's no mentor to help them with how to have Grow good up. social skills right you know so right. therefore they're just nipping at each other and playing and all that but there's no one to say excuse me that's, that's too much. enough we right. need to settle down now you know it's interesting because um they find scientists find that in animals that have a long lifespan their rate of maturity is a little bit slower and the intricacy of their social structure is much more precise and horses can live between 30 and 40 years so that's a long-lived creature and so their social structure really is a highly developed and intricate nuance in nature in domestic horses 
we set them up in certain ways and we, we put them in stalls and we put them in paddocks and hopefully horses get a decent upbringing. Um, but because of our desire to say, I, I want to ride you, I want to train you, I want to do these things, sometimes we can start introducing training processes before the horse is mentally 100% ready for that. Right. You know, we're just kind of like, I want to, you know, you're big enough, I should be able to get on you. Um, but their horse brains, according to Dr. Peters, who we've been able to spend some time with, uh, they're not really developed for learning capacity until between three, sometimes even four years old. So, right. yeah, because their brain is mostly focused on balance because mm -hmm. within, you know, the first hour of their life, they need to be getting up and moving with mom. So That's their it. brain is all about how do I balance? How do I move these four feet, neck, you know, have run. A tail, how do I run up run? this hill in an hour? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, we actually had an amazing moment to witness the birth of mm. a foal. And to watch Mama have the first conversations Very with cool that stuff. foal. It was so fascinating. So Like, she did the girth button. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, in yeah. this video, um, if you've read the book, then you'll be familiar. But if you've never heard of this, we have a, a glossary of terms that we've come up with, like a, another language to describe this language, <laughs> because horse speak is based on visual cues that horses are giving each other. And then our interpretation of those cues, I have hands... And I have a short neck and a short little face, and they have a long neck and a long face, and they don't have hands. But we can um, learn how to adapt our body language gestures so that horses intrinsically get it. I mean, maybe we have a thick accent, but pretty soon they go, oh, I think I know what you mean, because it's intrinsic. That means um, all of our brains as mammals are going through a list of, hmm, what? how do I create Bond, bonding, how do I create boundaries? Are you friend, are you foe? So there's basic needs that mammals have to get along together in a group. That's lucky for us because when you can move into what those um, natural systems are, then horses understand you really quick. So as you watch this video, there are some terms you're gonna hear me saying because we're in the middle of a clinic and we've already been exposing people to these terms. And this is a, a way for us to talk to other people. Right. Because you have to be able to say, hey, do a go away face. When you're out training somebody, people, people working with a horse, we have to be able to have lingo to be able to communicate right. so then they can follow through with the instruction. So yes. it's actually been really fascinating to be able to come up with this language system, both for the horses, so and then how we've just evolved constantly since the book came out in 2016 this it's non-stop because the horses are talking all the time and so that we have just evolved more and more to have the second language to be able to just talk to people people about it like did you do a tail swish you know so, <laughs> so we do have uh if if i use lingo in there there's a little bit of uh words that come along with this video just to, so you can catch up so you know you're not left in the dark you know what we're talking about but with that being said i think we're going to go ahead and roll this clip swish all right so instantly when i'm in here there's a tail swish because huh i have feelings about that now you're in here so go away face neck shoulder all right i'm gonna there we go very nice thank you so much that was lovely yes now she claimed the fence how interesting so she's claiming the fence so she just took hierarchy over me Hmm. That you're on your head. You're like, yes, she did. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm touching the shoulder. Now look on this side. You see that look? She looked at me like, how dare you? <laughs> and this is why I still want to have the rules of engagement. When I touched her shoulder there, she was like, how dare you? But I didn't make it a big deal. So she said, I, I guess we're going to share. And this actually suits you because this is two mares having a conversation okay. right now. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, I own this. And I was like, I might own it a little bit. And she's like, we'll agree to disagree. Okay. So now she went into the corner and she's like, I bet I can get more people to look at me than you can. Okay. So this is called problem solving. And she's in a corner and corners create problems because we can get trapped in corners. So now she's turning into the corner and claiming it and then beckoning me. 
So I'm going to say cheek, neck, shoulder, step. Yes. I'm going to claim this. Yes. So she claimed it too. <laughs> you see that? Mm. It's like, <laughs> I am a big little woman. Okay. I'm going to step in. Watch my step. Do you see her step? Yep. I'm going to relax and go to O posture and say that was just fine. Because she conceded the space. So this is called working the quadrants. So she's in a bubble. One quadrant is here. One quadrant is there. If I go to this quadrant, she can have that one. See? So now she's got the fence. But if I come back and claim this quadrant, she has to go around. Does that make sense, everybody? Maybe it's helpful because it's little. Now she's behind. She says, can I drive? Her next question, can I drive you? <laughs> okay, so this isn't I've got your back. This is you might want to move your butt. So I'm going to check in with her. I'm going to claim this quadrant. And look at the standoff. Oh, all right, I guess so then. And I'm going to, oh, right there. So now I'm saying I've got your back. She's on her toe, I'm on my toe, we're poised. This is hot action right here. <laughs> I'm gonna come around, get to her butt. Now she's guarding the baby. She just boxed me into the corner so I can't touch that baby. Do y'all see that? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna touch grooming and say it's okay. Baby's doing aw shucks. So that's keep the intensity low. Can you explain that? Awesome. She moved her. She just touched the sit <laughs> down button with her hook. Sit down, baby. <laughs> so uh, it's just a term. I thought of um, like an old Western movie, you know, the guy, the old cowboy who's, you know, gunslinger wants to take the girl to the dance. And he's like, oh, shucks, ma'am. Take you to the dance. Now. So she wants to scratch her butt. <laughs> well, just sit. It might be scratch your butt, but it was too fast. Okay, sit. Yep. I call that zombie mode. She'll start pushing. Up. Right. Well, what did she say? What did this mirror do to her right away? She touched her in the sit, and she said, "That's a naughty baby." So I'm gonna say, "You do, baby." <laughs> She's like, "I told you." <laughs> so now we're sharing baby duty. Now baby scratching vulnerability. Okay, way back there at the belly, that's vulnerability. So baby says, that made me a little insecure. So I'm going to hold vulnerability. And she's is too. See that? <laughs> I'm going to do downhill. Because babies can only take so much of anything. And you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to do backup. Very good. And I'm going to say, turn the key, come to me. She's got a hip cocked. She says, so far, so good. So I invited her to come back this way. She said, nah, that's work. I don't want that. <laughs> I'm going to go back over here. And then I'm going to go check in with her. And then maybe I'll come back. Notice I left my foot up. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Go away, face. Go away, shoulder. Here. Sit. Oh, she liked that. Look at her. You got it. She's just saying, I have babysitting duty. <laughs> Cheek, neck, shoulder. Good. Follow me. Buddy. Buddy and girth. So this is different. This is a different story. Did you see how she gave me babysitting duty? She's taking a nap. Yeah, finally. <laughs> she's, oh my God, someone else is watching the kid. <laughs> so now she's playing, right? She's going to be distracted. This is called displacement. And it's fine. It's because she hit her limit. That's good.
space. Space. Broken go away face button. <laughs> There's an Oshucks. Okay. So when she did Oshucks, she dropped the intensity level. Because she gets intense about it, pushy and demanding, right? It's cute now, it won't be cute in a year, but it will still be there. So when she dropped the intensity, I said, now you can have a scratch. Does that make sense, everybody? So I'm not saying I won't scratch you. I'm saying, show me what you got. Show me your manners and I'll scratch you. And that's what she's been saying to her too. So that that's right, be polite. Is that what, she, what she's doing with her mouth right now? Is that processing? No, she's doing, oh, it feels so good. Oh. She's doing happy lips. One, two, three. You can come with me if you want to. That's right. Follow my knuckle. My knuckle is the target. Stop. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Back up. Greet. Go away face. Space. See the ears? face. Away face. There's a low intensity. Good. Now she's a baby, so I got like a second of it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to do her, uh, the jugular groove is where the vagal nerve is. Around. It's around. It's near there. If you look at a chart, you can find it. But this tends to help them just get calm. Just scratching the bottom of the throat in a downward motion. Now she did a tail swish. I'm feeling funny. This feels funny to me. <laughs> I'm gonna say no kick. See, this is the stifle. See her cross under? Check in. Now I'll scratch you. So I'm not saying I won't do it. I'm saying show me your manners. Show me your no kick agreement. Show me your lower intensity. Show me you can hold space for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna touch the girth. Auntie reset on the uh, fence post and now is yawning. Very good. No kick, no kick, no kick, scratch. We have to sit right here where the bum meets the back of the leg go into the hop. Yes. And what do you want her to do in response to that? Well, she's pretty much sitting on my hand right now. Okay. Um, when they're gonna lay down, they have to buckle there. Uh-huh. I'm gonna do girth. <laughs> that was like a drunken step. <laughs> so when I did girth, I did tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. So that's an activation. Move forward. So if I did girth and then turn the key, come to me, I would have said activate, come back to me. But I just did activate, and she said, okay, fine, I'll leave. Because she's getting a little bit like, this is work. I don't believe in it. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, she's like, I do. I like that. Now she looked at the baby. She looked at me. And she's like, have you had enough of that baby? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Sit. Don't kick. Relax. <laughs> okay. Girth. <laughs> She's rubbing all the buttons. Right there. Good. Yes. Oh my Here? About a year. Now she's like, that's work, I'm gonna leave. This is good, because what I'm saying to her is, you can, and you can come back, and we'll work out together how you can get your needs met. So now she's gonna do resources, because normally her resources, um, she's kind of emotionally manipulating the situation, and like getting what she wants, which, yeah, she's a baby, but they have to learn boundaries, just like human toddlers, you know? Yes. Um, I'm not remembering the no kick agreement. That strikes me as an important one. Yes, yeah, important. <laughs> good girl. So now she came back. And I'm going to say that's good. Oops, nope. Right there. No kick. Stifle. Stifle. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. But I don't want to actually move her over. She's too, her joints are too flexible. Mm -hmm. So I'm just touching. Okay. Touch, touch, touch. And then I'll scratch. So it's remember, 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 no kick it. Cause she's young and she will. Cause they're young. They're just, they're gonna experiment. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. 
Oh yeah, that's the spot. It, <coughs> Any other questions? Well, this is a little off the subject, but do you have something that's a no jump for a dog? Like don't jump on people? <laughs> Put your knuckle out like you're greeting a horse and keep it low. What they're trying to do is get under your jawline, tail swish. They're trying to get under your jawline to show you loyalty and they can't because you're too tall. All righty. I forgot how cute that video was. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's such a prime e example of how taking one step mm. into their space and how it just the opening scene with Auntie and mm. how she just like bounced off your bubble mm -hmm. and how you just negotiated the fence line mm -hmm. because a protective horse is the one who is going to typically take Do those the, negotiations. Yeah. Yes. And so she's like, you really want to take the fence? Hmm. So it's like she was asking questions mm -hmm. like, oh, you are Instead protector. of being naughty yeah. or dominant, she was claiming the fence but then we found out why because right. that baby had a lot of juice <laughs> absolutely yeah and so she was like testing the water saying what what does this lady know because if i didn't know much she would have stood guard a little bit more and maybe even herded the baby off mm -hmm. more frequently and everyone's just been treating that baby like it's adorable which she is absolutely and they pretty much just go in and scratch her and give her whatever she wants all the time but she's becoming that kid because yeah. she gets what she wants all the time right so the auntie horse was relieved to see that we could communicate with her and actually people came in after that uh and did some of the same stuff and they they got back to us like a few months later and said that the baby's personality had definitely become a lot calmer mm -hmm. A lot more stable and not, none of that um, little kicking stuff she was doing, which in a small horse, in a mini horse like that, that's so tiny. I know. You just giggle and you go, ha, ha, you but that's still a kick. Go, Yeah, it's still a kick, but then put that on a full-size horse. Right. And that's the kind, sometimes that's how a full-size horse can also be invading the space. And so right. that's why it's so important to be aware of your own bubble of personal space and to be ready for when, you know, because you are basically ready the whole entire time working with that little filly because she was masterful at being able to be just swinging her hip around. Just swinging it around. And if that was a full size horse, that'd be, you know, a lot. Hip in the face. Yeah, that, it's not what you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was a great demonstration because. Um, you can, because they're so small, normally horse bodies are so large and there's a lot of mass for us to move around, but it's the exact same, um, technique of body mm -hmm. language. It's just in a small package. And the, the auntie was very good at communicating. She was clear. She was concise. I think one of the coolest things that I find in communicating with horses in their language is that they basically run patterns mm. and you know they if they run this pattern they're going to run this one and then this one and then this one because it's very systematic oh absolutely yeah it was like with the baby um she went over to the fence line and then came a circle back around to right. go and greet you again and the same thing it was all these circular conversations with the auntie and mm -hmm. you notice that mama did not come over <laughs> not once at all <laughs> and it's just interesting to think about not to get into uh you know a rabbit hole but to think about uh, the personality of mom where she's just like a kind of a standoff mom and just mm -hmm. letting auntie take care of the baby you know, and so it's different roles and personalities that every single horse has, just right. like we all have our own personality. And so that she's just like, yeah, auntie can deal with, you know, baby, and I'm going to stand over here and eat my hay and yep. have a nice day. And, right. you know, she's like, I nursed that one and I'm kind of <laughs> My done. job's done. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the thing to think about with uh, using horse speak is that you can do all these communications without ever touching a horse. And in this case, I'm in there with the baby and she wants to get scratched. And so there's a lot of touch going on, but most of the communication with the auntie mare was pretty hands off mm -hmm. and maybe a tiny bit of touch. And I think what blows people's minds is even if you've got a draft horse, it's the same level of fingertip, fingertip pressure. pressure. If you want motion, you, you make a, a motion, um, signal if you want 
to make connection, you make a connection signal. So one of the things we always teach people, we always run into is don't use this to move a horse away because this yeah. means inherently it's a flat surface. It's so a flat surface. It means they connection. Want, they're going to, if you push a horse away with they're your gonna palm, bounce back. they're going to just come. It's like a magnet. Yeah. They're coming right back in. If so you use this to move them away. Pointy finger to prong Then they hand. say, oh, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Or this was a great one for turn the key, come to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, we don't know exactly why they like the turning motion. We've done it in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. This is all horse approved stuff. So we get to see what horses like about doing stuff. Yeah. And they love this turning motion and then drawing it into your belly button. Most horses look at that and say, oh, I want to come over. Absolutely. So that's just, you know, the small little nutshell of watching these mini ponies, working with Sharon and using all the gestures, postures and signals, talking about the buttons and our personal X and O posture. So stay tuned to next time where we're going to look at some more horse human conversations. Stay tuned for Cracking the Horse Beat Code. All right.